is foolishness to man, and what is wise to man and smart and scientific is foolishness to God. And whatever is true is from God. And when science respects truth, it's respecting what God put in. But when science goes off on its on its crazy aberration, such as evolution, uh, and forces us down generations of kids in school, shoves it down their throat, that your great-great-grandma was a chimpanzee and an, a a and an ape in the world. Do you know who invented the Big Bang Theory? I never knew this until two weeks ago. It was a Catholic priest in France who invented the Big Bang Theory. A priest. And the Padre Teilhard de Chardin, who praised evolution. It's always the, the ones closest to our Lord who betray him the most. It started with Judas, and it's, it continues to the end of the world. So again, what, what is this whole fight for the faith about? Vatican II, and now Bishop Fillet's betrayals and his compromises. And it's, it's hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe because I've always respected him and I still always pray for him. But it's very, very sad what's, what's happening. But why? What's at the heart of the fight? At the heart of it is our Lord Jesus Christ is God. And that's final. Oh, well, where do you have proofs for that? Well, who alone had a virgin birth, who alone rose himself from the dead, who alone ascended into heaven by his physical power, and he was not assumed, which is passive like the Virgin Mary, she was assumed into heaven, carried by angels. The Christ was not assumed, he ascended, he acted, because he is God. And we see in the sacred scriptures his dominance. Firstly, he created all things. Through him all things were made. And his dominance over inanimate objects. It was the baby Jesus, the living God in the cradle at Bethlehem in the manger. It's he that led the, the Magi by the star. He moved the star. It was he that ordered the angels, go sing to the shepherds and tell them. So it was Christ who had power over inanimate objects. At his passion and death, what happened? A three-hour eclipse of the sun, never, never recorded in history, but it's recorded. It was seen by pagans in, in, in Spain and even in northern Egypt, and it's recorded. And also the tremendous earthquake at his death. Earthquake at his resurrection and the veil in the temple ripping in half from top to bottom. And you ladies know what it's like cutting a thick material with a pair of good scissors. It's not so easy. So to rip a, 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 a 60 foot high of sick, a, a very thick, heavy material, hanging, blocking, which, which marked the, the sanctuary, the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple, that was ripped from top to bottom. And then Christ cursed the fig tree, if you remember in the, in the Gospel. He cursed this big, green, healthy-looking tree, but it bore no fruits. And the apostles saw him curse it, and then they went on their way to the town of Jerusalem, and on their way back, they saw the tree completely dried up and withered and dry and dead, the one that Christ cursed. So Christ had power over inanimate objects. And then he had power over the animal kingdom. Peter says to our Lord, Lord, how are we going to pay the tax? We have no more money. Judas, Judas gave it all away. So he thought. And our Lord said, Peter, take your, take your hook and, and line and draw a fish out of the lake. And then you'll, you'll find a stator and pay the tax with that. So St. Peter, who had seen miracles of our Lord already many times, he didn't doubt. And he went, drew the fish, pulled in the fish, and there it was, a stater, a coin in his mouth, and he paid the coin with that. I paid the taxes with that. 
Our Lord also, uh, as you know, has recorded many times the miraculous catch of fish, his dominance over the animal kingdom. And what about over man? His dominance over men, men's sicknesses. And today in the gospel, he cures this leper. Our Lord receives from the leper adoration. If our Lord was a truthful prophet, he would not say, don't adore me. He would, he would not say, don't, he would not say, don't adore me. He would say, don't adore God. But he receives adoration because he is God. And who alone can, can say your sins are forgiven? Sins offend God, so only God can forgive what offends him. But Christ said, I forgive you. And only God can say that. And this is the Jews got furious over this. How can he, being a man, forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins. They all understood that. And so our Lord uh, has command over men's sicknesses. He has commands over over their diseases. He heals them by the thousands. He would enter a town and people would just get, he would empty out the hospitals, empty out the nursing homes. He would go find the lepers and those of good will would be cured. And they were so numerous, the miracles. Uh, it was just, you know, frontline news every day. More cures, more miracles throughout the whole region and, and it carried throughout all the way to Rome. And uh, according to Father Jacobus Veragine, Rome heard about this miracle worker in, in, Ju in Jerusalem. And then our Lord also had tremendous sway. St. Jerome says our Lord's burned with fire when he overthrew the tables in the temple. And he drove them out with whips. And St. Jerome says, and Origen says, this also proves his divinity, because one man holding sway over thousands of people. Normally, you know, anybody doing this, the, the soldiers would have jumped him, and, you know, you're causing a rocket, you're causing public disturbance. But our Lord, even, even the Roman soldiers, those were the Marine Corps, the Navy SEALs of those days, they didn't even dare approach him because Christ exhibited in his words, in his anger, the strength of Almighty God, and they didn't dare touch him. And that's another proof, says St. Jerome, of the sway he had. And then many times, as you know, they tried to arrest our Lord. They tried to push him over the cliff in Nazareth. They tried to uh, arrest him before his time. And St. Augustine says, when he was surrounded, and it wasn't his hour to be captured, Christ, says St. Augustine, made himself invisible and passed through them. Saint, Saint, so says St. Augustine. So our Lord had, had a power over men, but not as, as you know, he, he never showed anger except to the hypocrites. The hypocrites, pride is one sin Christ hates most. But always, even, even the greatest sinners who wallowed in the mud, St. Mary Magdalene and, and many other sinners, the woman caught in adultery, and uh, the men who were dishonest in business, he dealt with them mercifully, always mercifully. But it was pride that he hates the most. So our Lord shows his, his dominance, as St. Thomas Aquinas says, summarizes, over inanimate objects, over animals, over men, but also over the angels. And he had power, of course, over the fallen angels, the devils. <coughs> and how many times in the Gospels and the Scriptures is revealed Christ commanding the devil to leave. And the devils at one time, uh, a father brought his son, and the devils were shouting at him, We know who you are. You are the Holy One, the One, the Messiah. <coughs> And by this time, the devils had figured it out because it had been hidden from them. But all these people witnessing this and Christ orders him, be quiet. Christ orders the devils to shut their mouth and commands them to leave. So he showed before all the, all the chief priests and all the people, 
his dominance over the devils themselves. And when Christ was tempted, he allowed himself, we might be a little surprised, how does our Lord allow himself to be treated this way? With, with continual sacrileges, continual betrayals, continual sacrilegious masses that go on. And Father Malachi Martin and Father Via both expose the satanic rituals that go on right in the Vatican, during the Vatican Council. Rituals to Satan within the walls of the church, within the walls of St. Peter's. How does our Lord submit to this? To be desecrated and sacrilegious communions. <coughs> While our Lord himself allowed himself, says St. Gregory, to be carried by the devil up to the pinnacle of the temple and up on the mountain when he was tempted. And then Christ ordered him, Be gone, Satan. So, our Lord had mastery over the devils and he had mastery over the angels as well. The angels that appeared at the resurrection telling the apostles, he's risen. Don't look for the dead among the dead. He's not dead. St. Mary Magdalene and the angels that spoke and sang at Bethlehem and the angels that after the 40-day fast of Christ, remember it says in the gospel, the angels came and ministered to him. What's that mean to minister to? When the ladies ministered to their guests in a house, that means they serve them, they feed them. And the angels brought you know, we don't know the, what the menu was, but they brought the best food for our Lord to, uh, well, most likely simple food for, for his choice. But uh, they brought him food and drink to refresh him after the 40-day fast. So the angels ministered him to him. And also in the agony of the garden, the angel of consolation, holding the chalice. That is, our Lord saw, saw the names of all those who will go to heaven. And hopefully he saw your names there. Your name maybe was there to console him in his agony of the garden. <coughs> and even after offending him, repentance always moves our Lord to mercy. And so it was worth it, our Lord going through the passion to save 